Welcome to another episode of Dad's Garage. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Danny Nieves. I originally started this channel to document my projects in my garage so that I can share with my son and he can have fun watching them as we continue uh, doing more projects and just later on in life because that's something that I shared with my own father Which brought a lot of joy to me. It brings an amazing amount of joy to me just working on cars in general So today we're gonna be talking everything about doing Transmission flushes and doing it the fastest way possible coming up dealing with any kind of transmission flush. Number one, make sure that you check to your specs as far as what type of transmission fluid your car uses. And before you get into it, decide whether or not you're gonna change the filter. That's always a good idea to do. Uh, don't get caught up in all these uh, situations or, or, or uh, suggestions that when you change the transmission fluid, your transmission is gonna start slipping. That's not the case. If your transmission has issues already, then you might want to go to a mechanic and check it out. But if it's just something that's shifting fine, your transmission fluid's a little dark, this is something you can tackle at home real easy. I have two hoses like this. This, only one with the clear hose so I can see what's coming out of it to see when the transmission fluid starts getting brighter. And I have a second one which is all black. I have one of these trans cooler line fittings that you can get anywhere. And these are really inexpensive, it was like three or four dollars. That's all you're gonna need. Make sure that you have the proper transmission oil for your car specifically. On my Trans Am, we're gonna use the Dextron transmission oil, filter, gasket, complete flush, and some of the comments might fly by that you may not agree with me turning on the car and flushing it out by using the car and the pump, actual pump to pump out all the fluid. Okay, everybody has mixed feelings about that. I personally chose to do that under my own risk. So if you choose to do that under your own risk, that's completely fine, but I found out throughout the years that this is the quickest way to do a flush and it's so easy to do in the garage or in your own driveway. Let's get started. One of the first things you wanna do is find out where your transmission cooler is. And on this car specifically, and a lot of cars like it, it has a transmission cooler right into the radiator. So all I'm gonna do is detach this line right here, put one hose on one end of the line, and put the fitting on the other with the other hose, because one is always in and one is always circulating out. And you're gonna figure that out quickly, but by using the two hoses, you can't go wrong because one is just gonna start flowing fluid as soon as you turn on the car, and you're gonna notice it right away. And that's just a precaution to do the two hoses so that way you don't mess it up and you don't create a big fluid mess on your floor, in your garage, or in your driveway. Line wrenches like this, so these are specifically built for lines. It's very unlikely that you're gonna strip them. been completely flushed out and I just want to show you something really quick. It's just crap in there. You can see it. Now we're underneath the transmission. We're gonna take the pan out because obviously it was definitely leaking. It actually came out a little bit better than I expected to see. I did not want to bore you on how dirty the cross member and everything else under there was. I cleaned it up, looks real good, and while I have the cross member down, I noticed that when I was driving the car, or test driving it before, it was doing a little bit of banging under there, and of course, you know, that means the transmission mount has to be changed. I didn't think it was that bad from the first glance on it. This is what I got. It's actually... Like, it didn't look that bad until one of the ends dropped out when I took the cross member out. So, 
This is going into the garbage. And I got a new one already. I'm showing you some tips and tricks that you do at your own risk. I'm by no means a, a professional here trying to suggest to you exactly what to do with your car. But I mean, this has worked for me in the past. It's working for me now that I, and I'm gonna show you. Everything came out nice and clean. All the transmission bolts. See, it's nice and clean underneath. And that cross member was covered in gunk. And that's nice and clean, ready to reinstall. I also wanted to share with you, these are the parts that you're gonna need. This is the part number right here. I will also put it in the description for you. It's for the filter and gasket. The gasket, I have it out in the sun over there. This is the new transmission mount. I'll put everything in the description for you just in case you're doing the same car. When taking out the transmission oil filter, you definitely want to look out for this seal right here. Hope you can see that. And you want to make sure that the old one comes out. It's a week of Christmas, and as you know, interruptions happen. Ethan got something in the mail today. I got this, and it comes with tracks to them. I'll show you. It has a ramp. Awesome. I'll make you go faster. You gotta save some for Christmas, mister. Say happy holidays to everybody. Happy holidays! The filter gave me a little bit of trouble, and all because of that little seal. The transmission, oil, filter, and the mount are already done. But, I also forgot to mention that while I was test driving, I heard a little jingling in the back in the, uh, of the car, almost like a chain or something like that. And so, I wanted to show you real quick what I found. That's it. This car has a rear sway bar and the bushings are completely gone. What I was hearing was this. While I'm down here, I might as well replace them. It has been the perfect day to finish out the transmission project. So the transmission filter, oil has been drained and flush and new oil in it. And along the way, I found out that we needed some sway bar bushings in the rear. Those were replaced as well. I didn't bother getting into too much detail on that because it was a quick swap. It's very, very easy to do. Real soon, we'll take it out for a test drive and see how she's doing. If you enjoyed today's video, definitely hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.